Hello there, my fellow Astartes drivers, and welcome back to another episode from the Space Marine Armory. This is the place where we talk about various guns, weapons, and vehicles predominantly in use by the Space Marine chapters. Relatively recently, I finally got around to doing a video on the Whirlwind Tank, the most widely used artillery vehicle of the Astartes. However, I also mentioned that I will be covering a few other variants of the Whirlwind at some point. So, that is the topic of this video. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about them, shall we? The Whirlwind Hunter The Hunter is a variant of the standard Space Marine Whirlwind Artillery Tank, serving as the Space Marine's primary surface-to-air combat unit. Armed with a potent Sky Spear missile launcher, the Hunter has proven its worth in many, many war zones, scouring the skies of enemy bombers and fighter craft. The Hunter is one of the main surface-to-air combat vehicles of the Adeptus Astartes, and it is the first dedicated anti-aircraft platform fielded by the Astartes. Prior to the discovery of the STC for the Hunter, many Space Marine chapters had attempted to retrofit the Whirlwind in various ways, with mostly negative results. The vehicle's design is based on STC data that is much older than the more recent Whirlwind Hyperios anti-air tank. Though the Hyperios is a stable pattern of anti-air combat vehicle, and is becoming widely adopted by many chapters, there are still even more chapters who continue to use the Hunter on the battlefield. This includes the recent Third War for Armageddon, where the Hunter was used in great numbers by Astartes chapters like the Black Templars, who participated in that conflict. The Hunter also features improved front and side armor over the standard Whirlwind, and is outfitted with hydraulic stabilizers anchoring the vehicle to the ground so that when it fires its anti-aircraft weapon, it suffers no recoil. The Hunter is a variant that replaces the Whirlwind Multiple Missile Launcher with the aforementioned Sky Spear Missile Launcher. The Sky Spear Missile Launcher fires pre-blast Savant warheads, each one a relic in its own right, housing the entombed remains of a distinguished chapter serf. The servitor's mummified brain augments the missile auto-targeters, allowing it to second-guess enemy pilots or home in on heretical emissions of their debased aircraft's machine spirit. Against the dogged pursuit of a savant warhead and its entombed pilot brain, there is little chance to escape, while the vehicle's servo loaders maintain a steady rate of fire. Now, since all of these variants basically use the same chassis, I'm only gonna read the statistics once and for the Hunter. Its crew consists of one driver and one gunner. Its power plant is a Quad Mark II adaptable thermic combustor reactor. It weighs 33 tons. Its length is 6.6 .6 meters, or 21.6 feet. Its width is 4.5 meters, or 14.7 feet. Its height is 5 meters, or 16.4 feet. Its maximum speed on road is 68 kilometers an hour. Its maximum speed off-road is 50 km an hour. The Whirlwind Stalker This one is another mobile anti-aircraft platform and also a variant of the Whirlwind Hunter. The Stalker replaces the Whirlwind Multiple Missile Launcher with an Icarus Storm Cannon Array. Unsubtle and devastating, the Icarus Storm Cannons are a twinned array of multi-barreled ballistic cannons, with the capacity to track multiple targets at once. The Stalker's front and flank armor is thicker than most other Rhino chassis-based vehicles, allowing the Stalker to deflect or absorb more incoming enemy fire. The sides of the Stalker also feature hydraulic stabilizers just like the Hunter, that anchor the vehicle to the ground so that when it fires its anti-aircraft cannon, it suffers no recoil or loss of accuracy. Each of the cannons is shackled to separate servo mines that direct the cannon independently of each other. The weapons can fire upon separate targets, or if need be, they can fire upon the same target. Every salvo fired from the storm cannon fills the air with hundreds of rounds of ammo that are capable of tearing even the greatest tyrannid beast or potent enemy flyer into shreds. 
Like mentioned, the Stalker is capable of unleashing its storm cannons in two different firing modes, depending on the situation. When in single target mode, the Stalker concentrates both its storm cannons at the same target, and the weapons act as if they were twin-linked firing in tandem. The sheer concentration of fire can bring down even the heaviest of enemy flyers. In dual target mode, the Stalker is capable of firing its storm cannons independently of one another, each one firing upon a target at the same time. This reduces the sheer amount of damage that can be inflicted upon the target, but allows the Stalker to engage multiple targets effectively. The Deimos Whirlwind Scorpius This one, also known as the Whirlwind Scorpius in short, is a rare variant of the ancient Deimos pattern Whirlwind that was widely used by the Space Marine Legions during the Emperor's Great Crusade and the Horus Heresy eras in the late 30th and early 31st millennia. The term Whirlwind was used among the Legiones Astartes to describe a range of vehicle-mounted multiple missile launcher systems, many of which had been recovered during the Great Crusade and were undergoing frontline trial with various units. The Scorpius was a pattern that had only recently entered service during the opening years of the Horus Heresy, having been created at the behest of the Space Wolves Legion to aid in the campaign against the fortified bastion cities of the Gasulian sub-realms. Fighting alongside the Legion Predators, with which it shares many common armor and drive systems, the Scorpius had proven itself well suited to high-intensity operations and had been approved for service across the entirety of the Legiones Astartes. The vehicle's Scorpius multi-launcher was a prototype weapon system, intended to replace the standard whirlwind armament, which was undergoing battlefield testing at the outbreak of the Horus Heresy. This weapon system made use of implosive warheads that were devastating to armored infantry and light vehicles alike as well as the launcher itself being more capable of rapid fire than its predecessor, the Scorpius's rocket munitions were designed to concentrate their force in a more confined area, greatly increasing their destructive potential if limiting a bit the area of effect. The weapon's complex munitions and intricate drum-fed design has led the Scorpius multi-launcher and the vehicle itself to become an example of a much honored vehicle type. That's because they no longer exist widely within the known canon of STC machine lore in the 41st millennium, save by those few chapters that still manufacture them. Like so many other so-called relic war machines, those few that still exist are ancient, irreplaceable vehicles considered holy artifacts by the Adeptus Astartes. The ancient launch system, targeting mechanisms and ammunition feed utilized by these relic Scorpius whirlwinds are unlike any other model in common use in the 41st millennium. These systems utilize strands of machine cannon that are barely understood by the adepts of the Adeptus Mechanicus, and, as such, they are held in a mix of awe and reverence by the tech priests and the tech marines alike. For the latter, however, the Scorpius represents a legacy of an age of dread, a memory that is all but forbidden to conjure forth. The very existence of the whirlwind Scorpius serves as a direct reminder of the dire events of the Horus Heresy, for it was conceived to engage heavily armored enemy infantry. The weapon certainly saw widespread use among the Legiones Astartes, whether loyal to the Emperor or to the Warmaster Horus for it was ideal for cracking open the Ceramite battle plate, worn then as now by space marines. The Scorpius is therefore regarded by many as a direct and bitter reminder of the mass fratricide that consumed the Emperor's legions and brought the nascent Imperium to the very brink of destruction. To feel it is to summon forth the ghost of the distant past and to witness anew the crimes of warriors once hailed as humanity's greatest hope. Because of the deep-seated significance of the whirlwind Scorpius, it is rarely called forth from the stasis chambers of the fortress monasteries, even when space marines are to confront heavily armored enemies against which such a weapon would be highly effective. When the Scorpius is awakened from the reliquaries, it is to engage in battle against the hated traitors still serving those dark powers to which they sold their souls to. The hatred of that bygone era is summoned forth to fuel both sides, 
the whirlwind Scorpius serving in the capacity in which it once excelled, cutting down the traitors to humanity with brutal fratricidal efficiency. It is also armed with a pintle mounted twin linked heavy bolter, a searchlight, and smoke launchers. And just like all the other variants mentioned today, it can also be equipped with a hunter killer missile launcher, a dozer blade, and extra armor plating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you on some of these unique whirlwind variants for today. I know I didn't talk about all of them, but I felt that the couple I didn't mention were too samey with the base whirlwind I covered in the previous episode. Are you a fan of this artillery tank? Which version described today did you find the most interesting? Let us all know what you think about it in the comments below as usual. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. And if you want to stay a bit more up to date, you can also click the bell notification icon. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all an awesome day. The Emperor Protects.